visitors. Can we simply rest in the miracle of being without the interfering mind seeking meanings, purposes and goals? Isn't this enough? The sound of Bach, the soft cushions at my back, the gentle spring sunlight, all these perceptions and more. Surely nothing more is needed. And yet, the subtle pressure to do, to be active, achieving, accomplishing, this is also present. Memories of jobs still to be completed, tasks outstanding, all arising in this moment. All invading the peace and stealing the silence when given attention. That's the secret. Whatever is given attention becomes our reality. Sounds, sights, thoughts, feelings, all competing for attention. Like a crowd of visitors all jostling around in my lounge. Well, let's look at these visitors a little more closely. The first two visitors are small and look insignificant, but the gifts they bring are special. The first carries chocolate, which has a delicious taste. The second carries a bunch of roses, which smell wonderful, a delicate and subtle fragrance. Next in the door is a musician, playing entrancing and exciting melodies, to which one could listen for hours. But look, in comes a fantastic sight, a figure wearing multicoloured costumes, shimmering in light and a rainbow of colours. The vision is so striking and awesome that the other visitors fade into the background. Suddenly, the ground is shaken by the arrival of the next visitor, and a shiver of anticipation runs up our spines and speeds our heart rate. In she or he rushes and embraces us with fierce passion. We experience both pleasure and pain. The sensual cuddles and fondling and stroking grow into increasingly unbearable tickling, pinching and poking. Comfort has been stolen and both our skin and internal senses plague us with a range of sensations. Experiencing heat and cold, pressure and pain, confusion reigns as our five visitors compete for our attention. Our sixth and final visitor is uninvited, though barges through the door as if he owns the place. Huge and intimidating, he wears several badges, reading The Boss, Me and ego, amongst others. From an inordinately large head, orders, explanations and requests are relayed. I can explain everything, he confidently claims, and starts to label and judge the other five guests. Somehow, once given a name and description, each of our previous guests' presence fade and lose much of their magic. They appear overshadowed by the bullying presence of our last guest, and sit around the edge of the room, vainly trying to attract our attention. As soon as one of them has entered our awareness, in comes our sixth visitor with a comment, critical or otherwise. We notice that this boss, or ego, carries several heavy bags labelled memories, knowledge, fantasies, feelings, and so on. Every few seconds he takes a present from one of his bags and throws it to us, as if feeding a hungry pet. Often he takes a feeling from his bag at the same time, and so perhaps a memory and emotion arrive simultaneously. 
either a positive or negative reaction arises. Either desire or aversion catch our attention. Powerful hooks grab our attention as thought after memory after feeling arrive in quick succession. Our last visitor declares himself to be mind and claims to be who we are. His activities are hypnotic and he tries to capture and imprison us in the room. Indeed, despite the occasional pain, both physical and mental, we seem mesmerised by this magic show. We could lose ourself in this performance and forget who we really are and what is real. Choosing to leave our guests to entertain themselves, we move to another room. Here there is nothing simply emptiness in which our awareness can rest. No sensations, thoughts or feelings, just perfect stillness. Attention watching itself. This is our true home and although we can go back to the busy room and join in the pantomime again, we know we don't belong there. We can instead rest here in the silence of our heart. Peace. The cloudy water settling into clear beauty and life simply being. This cannot be communicated. Silence arises.